So what you want to do with the other camera, the, the other one, this is the B unit camera, tomorrow, is you want to film the footage on the chimera after the girls are rescued. And, and put them in the story where they're supposed to be. And then that other scene of her dialogue will make sense. She's interacting with them through the view screen. It doesn't make sense now because she's not interacting to anybody. She's talking to the screen. But I figured, like, let's do all her lines and get them done. And all the other lines and get them done. And then go back and uh, do the, the Chimera Bridge or they've been rescued. Also, that scene where, I guess, Tailteller shows up at the end as a cue. Why can't Chica just be the, the, the cue? Because if the timeline has changed back, he wouldn't be there anyway. But would he technically be there? I don't think he would be. Yeah, so that it's just Chica. She has power. She's a Cillian. Sandra has powers. Of course she does. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, th so that's it for the evening then. Just got back from the uh, play practice thing. And I'm going to finish this bridge scene. So it's a little after, it's almost 9.40 uh, at night. I'm going to finish this scene because it's that close to being done. So let's just finish it. Just do it. So we're going to go and we're going to finish it. Um, this is the bridge scene. Uh, these are Dax's lines. I've redressed the set so it's Dax's bridge. Shortly after she said emergency saucer sap. And, and yeah, so we're going to see what happens. So what happened is in the uh, parallel universe, those events uh, kicked them back in time a little bit. So that when they came up to the present, the other parallel universe ship got to address the bad guys and fool them into into letting their commander beam over to the to the to their ship thus messing up their temporal shields and so basically this scene is her telling her telling Dax that uh, my universe doesn't exist anymore but I'm gonna I've, I've captured the plague ship and we're gonna leave destroy us and that kind of thing that's gonna happen so we're gonna do that however it's a different timeline so for them their ship now has it doesn't have a timeline it'll probably disappear after that we'll see <laughs> so let's do it let's do it let's get it done so note that when you edit the uh, no easy way out scene and you get to the the part the the evil bridge the torture chamber is immediately after that but there's a briefing room scene in the story so there's a briefing room scene in the story and then and then back to the torture chamber and there is no shuttlecraft scene they have the dialogue in the torture chamber and then they leave in the torture chamber it makes more sense it just made more sense to electrocute the guards in the torture chamber um so so yeah um uh yes and, and, and clarity clarity boy there clarity is not a boy clarity is hella is a hella zap hello one two three so just so you know that's the same person it's a girl it's not a boy <laughs> uh, but yes uh that that's the gag see you can kind of tell from the from the yeah and then this is a mirror universe version and what's fun is i, I made it crass so the, so the idea there is that she's breaking character by saying i'm clarity i'm clarity <laughs> which is funny oh um, she's like wait i thought you were there ted or jenny and he's like no 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 i was Cl i was a uh, zap sabrina zap um <laughs> oh oh shit <laughs> And then, and then, and then, there's a little joke in there about about somebody named Mr. P. We don't know who it is. Mm, well, we do know who it is, but don't know him now. Many years, and uh, yeah, and, we, and, and I put a little joke in there, a little in joke. That also works as a, as a, you don't know who the guy is or anything. Like there was a, yeah, it 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 seems like it's too much of an in joke, but the but they kind of they kind of give a punchline and, and a response to the joke so that it doesn't matter who this person was, just that he liked her and that he had a big dick. Yeah, and he couldn't handle her, apparently. He couldn't... <laughs> Which is funny. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, so yeah. Um, so, so whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's just a little snippet in there as they're on their way out being flippant. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, here, making up, finally onto the evil bridge, the evil uh, sick bay, and at the torture room after the briefing. So, let's do that. Okay, well, we have 80 minutes, roughly, for uh, act, let's go on act two of uh, 
this story. Because we can. Why not? Um, meet up with Bluesen. First time Bluesen is animated. And uh, it's another Dr. Crusher. It's the one that was in the evergreen box. So there she is. So yeah. Um, let's go. So we're going to do a little tiny bit of uh, 33 minutes worth of uh, Planet Flodi in the episode No Easy Way Out. And we're going to start. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, No Easy Way Out this episode. And we just finished uh, Act uh, Part 2, Act 2 of three acts. Act 3 only has 10 pages because we did the bridge scenes and they're already done. I think there might be a, a final thing. I don't think so. I think it's all in there. I think that's the next. Um, yeah, so there were, there were a bunch of jokes and, and, and one of systems in there and stuff like that. Uh, most of which didn't actually happen, so don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, you have um, a cast and a spaceship thing going. <laughs> They go to the mirror universe. We've done that a bunch of times in Cillian Realms. But our Cillian Realms mirror universe is always a little different. A little different. And it, it does tie into the Fallen Ones saga because it basically, in this other universe, leads to the events of the Fallen Ones saga. So, uh, in this, it's, so they, they were in the mirror universe when they were in the Fallen Ones story. Because it was in the future. Or, or they were in a universe that was similar. So they might have been in the mirror universe in that one. Not sure, maybe, sort of, kind of. What was the what was the other thing? There was um, something about the the different hookups and stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I, it had um, <laughs> the Elijah. So so what's going on is is originally there were the at Pine Hill, there was uh, uh, John and me and, uh, and and the cast and everybody, and and Chris and Libby and, and Libby was the Libyan because we thought it would be funny that her name sounded like Libya. We had no idea it was a country. Or a rival. We just thought it was funny. So we were high schoolers and didn't know what we were talking about. And um, uh, at the time, see, that was Libya, yeah. Even though later on, America liked the oil that they had over there. They had a shell place over there. But, but yes, it's, anyway, so, um, yeah, we didn't know. We weren't making fun of Libya. We were making fun of a scene from Back to the Future where they had Libyan terrorists in it. And back to the Future. What's well, this kind of offensive? Looking back on it a little bit, but yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, but we, we did that a lot. We we had other countries in there too. There was an Outer Mongolia planet. It wasn't junior high. I didn't know there was a real Outer Mongolia. I just thought somehow that's combined with. I didn't know I was junior high and didn't have any idea. Uh, <laughs> they uh, yeah. The, the school was very isolated. They didn't. Yeah, we didn't have. A large minority population at all, um, so wouldn't have known at all at, back then. I'm assuming that now, whatever new version of Pine Hill there is, they have a larger population of that, so they're like, oh, they, they wouldn't make that mistake. But they didn't teach that, <laughs> so um, but we figured it out later. So the these were uh, blonde, blue-eyed characters. They were not in any any ethnicity at all. The joke was the name. The name was the joke. So now they're the Elysians in this, which sounds more like a beer company. Um, it's not supposed to be. They just wanted to come up with something that wasn't a real country. And it, apparently it is a country somewhere, some kind of a nation state. So great. Um, but it's not them either. Um, so yeah, so the, the, yeah, the, other, the other stuff, the hookups and all that. So, so there was a story in the 90s when I believe, I believe uh, the 90s, yeah, when, um, when Libby... For where was I? Was it in high school? And there was a, uh, a story about like uh, her uh, uh, another kid named we'll call him Messi was uh, making up rumors, and <laughs> and it wasn't true. That's all. That's all that was. Um, <laughs> uh, but in, in this universe, there was a Cillian Realms episode where they go on the holodeck as adults, and one of them hooks up with Holocat. The, the counterpart in the other universe, the, one of the the, the uh, but Libyan the, the Libyan character, the Elijah, is not really either of the twins. The Elijah was created by Q to annoy Picard, like the other children were. The children went on the holodeck with Q powers. The high schoolers went on the holodeck, and they were like, Psh, "We want a clone of her that actually is the bad guy from their stories." Boom! There's Elijah. There's the Libyan. That's where she comes from. So it's not a Libyan. It's not somebody from Libya. It's this girl, Libby is cloned, and Colocat, who was cloned, gets with her when they're adults later on. So, that's all. That's not even interesting. But other than that, that's what's going on. Um, so, yeah. That's what's, yeah, yeah. That's what happened.
Uh, they don't really, though. They, they, he doesn't. No, that would be scary. They, they wouldn't do that. That would be that would be going go, putting it in crazy, and, and we're not doing that. So, yeah. But yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Also, the other ones. Yeah. The Buffkins meeting. Uh, oh yeah. That's the other thing. Uh, before I go, the uh, the other thing is that. Uh, yeah. The, we were kind of like Beavis and Butthead before Beavis and Butthead and Mike Judge thought of it. Mike Judge is from Texas. He couldn't have met us at all. It, it's not possible. Uh, the Beavis and Butthead were... were the, he was making an archetype. Beavis and Butthead were an archetype for the for the dumb, rocker, slacker, teenager, sort of goofy, oh, we're going to watch MTV and film ourselves set from the 90s. So for the, for the internet, he kind of predicted internet bloggers. He really did. Uh, which is kind of amazing. Um, yeah. Usually internet bloggers are just one guy. They usually don't do the Burns and Allen thing. But Beavis and Butthead are doing the Burns and Allen thing. They're doing the Charlie Chaplin thing. With Charlie and Stan Stanley and Ollie thing. They're doing... It's actually very classic and very old. It's very old Hollywood, Emeryville type of area, Fremont area, Hollywood before Hollywood kind of shtick going on. Uh, they're, they're actually... They're actually um, Beavis and Butthead are actually an iconic sort of character duo, uh, famously repeated in uh, you know, years ago in the Neil Simon play The Odd Couple, which became a series as well. It's the same idea. Uh, Bert and Ernie on Sesame Street, same idea. It's a Wonderful Life, same idea. You have you have the the stickler slacker sort of messy guy, and you have the smart smarter sort of um, obsessed obsessive compulsive got to clean everything guy. Put them in a room and they uh, act off each other. That's that's an old trope going back to vaudeville and all that stuff, way before that. And it probably predates even that. You could probably say that some of the characters going hundreds of years back are like that. Uh, some of the characters in Shakespeare are kind of like that. Um, that 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 whole idea that the stickler, you know, guy and the and the sort of muddy riffraff kind of guy, sort of down on his luck guy, and they hang out because they like each other. Um, it's, it's not gay, or maybe it is. Um, <laughs> and so we have, we have uh, Kling Buff there, who is not gay, meeting um, his doppelganger for the first time. Uh, it's the first time actually Kling Buff has been in Starship Locations. He's been in the series and the stories and everything, but he hasn't been in the, in the place. It's not really him, but it's, it's me doing the voices. But, but, it, but it's... Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's the first time they've actually been in a live story. I wanted to do these stories to make them live to to do these stories. I wanted to do this and to put this out because because I wanted to put all of them in this final season of the Starship Locations. Although now at present we're kind of thinking we need a, a final movie after this ten episode series, uh, the movie a send off, and we have a script from another story that we weren't going to use that we'll probably just use. So. So note that. Um, also, the yeah, the, the him meeting his doppelganger would be Beavis meeting Butthead, basically. And so, um, in this story, so he, they do. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that would be really meta is if Sandra Talisman meets Sandra Talisman. That that'd be meta. I don't know if that happens in here, but this was based on earlier stuff, sort of pseudo mirror universe stuff. We've done several times in the in the Cillian Realms books, if you read them. Be like, oh, that's like that planet, and that's like this other planet, and that's... We sort of combined them, we conglomerated them together and put them on Flodi. Yeah, we, we've put them together. Um, there was a hilarious couple nights of, uh, of, of meeting, cast meeting on this one, and we actually got uh, Brian Sorry, who played Kirk God, and brought him back during the writing of these episodes. And, and uh, we thought of some really funny stuff, and uh, I've included some of that in here. Um, some of the dialogue and stuff that's in that story is right out of that that conversation. It's hilarious. Um, yeah, he was an actor. He bit parts on. Uh, he appeared in the background in Relics and in Babylon Five and isn't it TNG Babylon Five and DS Nine. Um, so yeah, he appeared in a bunch of stuff. I don't know if he's on Voyager though. That was the other guy. Voyager guy was the other guy. Um, I was kind of funny that the Trek Yards guys were all the Voyager Bridge was really big when they put it out in the Voyager Bridge. No, it really wasn't all that big. It was the Battle Bridge from Next Generation. They just redressed it and redid the ceiling and all that. It was different enough, but it wasn't big. It was wide. It was wider than the other one. But, but yeah, it wasn't... Anyway, so... But, yeah, uh, yeah, so that's, that's um, the, the story of that, that 
there was no, we did not get with the twins, the McLennan twins. No, that did not happen. Um, so, yeah, I think they're playing off the rumor joke as, as a joke in there. Uh, and he wouldn't know about that either. So, yeah, nobody got with, with them other than, other than the infamous Henry story. One of the high schoolers uh, dated one of them. Yeah, they, they dated briefly. <laughs> but not anymore. When they were in high school. Mm, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, so what? Anyway, so, um, yeah, uh, uh, it doesn't really explain how the adults would have the powers, except that they have the Grice knob. Also, the, the, uh, the scene where Garrick turns into Dax, basically, Kling Dax, uh, uh, I, I threw that in there instead of using a Garrick doll, because I thought it's a mirror universe, and I thought it would be fun to, uh, to homage that Andrew Robinson, if he got a hold of, as Garrick, got a hold of a device that could change him into anything, he would choose to be turned into a woman and show up in this universe. So I thought that would be kind of cool. Oh, he'd transition there. And a, re a reference to that. There have been some of those references in there. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that it would be cool to have, have, have Garrick have become a woman so they can be with Bashir. Because <laughs> sure, why not? It's funny. Uh, it's the mirror universe, so hey, you can do anything you want, right? <laughs> anyway, that's it for uh, so far. <laughs> a little bit more later. <laughs> okay, that was hilarious yesterday. But we're going to do the line again just because I don't think I actually said it right. Um, <laughs> even though, so we're going to start on the end of page 21 and then go from there with this uh, episode. So, yeah. Okay, so... Last two and a half pages before we catch up to the footage we already shot of Khaki and the others going, we've made a new alliance and all that, and that's already done. So really, um, just a couple pages. Um, just That's it. Also, I'm going to make a correction to the character that shows up before them that's flamboyant, in that that should be Mr. P who shows up. And the reason he's flamboyant is it's a, a spoof of a... makes more sense than having Khaki show up right there. So it's not Khaki in that scene, it's... It's going to be Mr. P. And, and, and it's a riff of, since we've got Abmar Alvin Williams, we're going to rip uh, that World According to Garp ending, apparently. <laughs> it's a of it. Um, but yeah, Mr. P. And he's not called Mr. P because he's Mr. Peoples from Jukes of Own. He's called Mr. P because he's Mr. Picard. Mr. Lucky Cleric. But he's not Lucky Cleric. He's Mr. Lucky Cleric. Mmm, you'll find out. Mmm. So, this is the end of the penultimate episode of this season. We've wrapped production on uh, the episode. We have we've did the bridge scenes and the media room scene earlier. And there's a little added to the end because it kind of doesn't end. It just has a sort of fizzle out ending. Uh, we tied it into, the, we changed the, uh, changed the khaki line to include uh, Mr. P. Mm, or Mr. Picard or Mr. P. Perizzo. And Mr. Picard, uh, uh, Mr. Picard, I don't know what his nationality is, but in this version, he is, he's a black guy. He's a LaForge figure. He's sort of reminiscent of the LaForge figure from the season one of Next Generation, where they clearly were trying to make LeVar Burton's character gay, but they, then they changed it. It's, he was clearly supposed to be gay. That's why he was all like, ooh, I'm flamboyant. Oh, Wesley, not bad, and all that stuff. Uh, but then they decided second season, no, 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 he's not. No, no, he's not. Um... But they just didn't want to go there in, in 1987, 88. Um, yeah, so so actually, uh, we change it to the other guy so that we can sort of redeem his his arc and, and make fun of stories like uh, since there was a little bit of a Brian story the Brian story like character, Brian Tailteller playing a, sort of a Robin Williams character. Why not reference the world according to Garp, which uh, is half drama and half comedy. And have a scene where instead of somebody losing their junk and then having a higher voice, he already has the higher voice because he lost his junk and gets it back. Because the because the sparring accident didn't kill him. It just it just silly tracked him and now and now the other guy, the, the Q the Q shadow dancer had his junk in a jar. So once they put the junk back, he, his voice suddenly goes deeper again. <laughs> of course it does. I didn't want to do anything weird with, like, the relationships at the end, because the other two did that. So I just kind of implied 
that Kling Buff and Kling Buff and, and his own his own doppelganger was the only people that could love him would be his own self. And so he's all, mmm, they're going to go out to the toy show together. Oh, my. And so anyway, so, yeah, they're, they're not going to, yeah, he's still thought that would be funny. But you figure, um, uh, they, I also threw in a very Star Trek line at the end where they offered to cure the mirror universe, and that's what, that's what the captain, that's why they freed him. Yeah, they cured them, and then they left. That then it makes more sense. Then it's like, oh, okay, the the the, the virus that's run rampant on the planet, the Seldanian Nintendo since that's made everyone crazy. What if they cured it in that universe? Well, 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 how, how would that universe be changed? Would it be more like Silly Trek or less? You kind of imply in the story because they do reference uh, uh, toward the end there that the saucer section was was found, but that saucer section was mentioned to have been found in. Um, uh, season two of Picard. In season three, they actually find they actually rebuilt the ship and made it to Syracuse. This story sort of um, mentions that, uh, but of course, this was written before. This was written in February, uh, late January of uh, of this year. So it was before uh, that that story. Um, so so yeah, we, we didn't know about the Enterprise coming back, but uh, it's interesting because now we can imply that we did, but we didn't. So apparently in this alternate mirror universe it gets cured. And we don't know what time period this other mirror universe is. It seems to be earlier, but it could be later. Um, yeah, it could be the 2370s. They could have gone back to then, which would be the 1990s. That would explain why Kira and Bashir looked younger. And, and, and Kim and the others looked the same. Um, maybe they just sort of, yeah, uh, maybe that's what happened. They're, they're actually in the past. At some point in the past. Not quite 30 years in the past, but... And, and also, if they cured them, would that become the Picard universe? Is that why the timeline is, is screwed up and there's like six years missing where they shouldn't be? And the timelines don't match up and the star dates don't match up just because they, they weren't paying attention in the story, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they got the year and the data mixed up with the Picard show. They, they thought... Yeah, they got 2379 and 1999 mixed up is what happened. That's what happened. Uh, they knew 2379, that was when that other story took place. So what they should have said is 2399, 2379. Okay, it's 20 years later, which doesn't give enough, well, it kind of barely gives enough time for Picard to have a kid with Beverly, but not really, unless the kid was born at some point before Nemesis. And we just didn't know about it. Um, that that doesn't match up. I guess I mean, should, maybe. Um, not sure, what would be up with that? Um, well, maybe they retcon that too. Maybe they're saying, okay, maybe she put him in England for a while because there was like four years between between insurrection and Nemesis. Maybe they maybe he was already born and they put him. She put him in a, a boarding school or as a preschooler or something. It wasn't around. Either that or this story kind of implies that the Picard series and Discovery and all those other shows are in an alternate timeline. It's not really the Star Trek timeline. They've been doing a show, Picard show, and they've been in a mirror-type universe, a silly and mirror-type universe, where it's not quite the mirror universe, but it's not quite the universe of Picard and show. Then it would make a whole lot more sense. They go, okay, we actually didn't see the end of Next Generation and the crew. We saw a version of Next Generation and crew from an alternate timeline. So they can get away with whatever they want to do. And Maybe Nemesis didn't happen in that version. Maybe the Data Picard didn't happen in that version. It's a little convoluted, though, as this story points out. It's convoluted. And then they get out of there. And, and also the idea of uh, this, this Q power thing goes to that episode that they never addressed again where Q offers Riker powers. It was like season, the second time we see Q. And, and back in the day when we were high schoolers, that episode aired, you know. Well, not so much on Mark's cards because he wasn't watching the show, but the other guys were watching the show. And um, he wasn't watching it until season two. So it's kind of funny because he, he didn't know what was going on until after the first writer strike. Um, so yeah, he would write stories where the characters weren't behaving like the characters. Describe Data as more of a C-3PO kind of guy, a Star Wars guy, walking around, um, bungling Star Wars guy. Um, but but yeah, the uh, 
And LaForge was described as Stevie Wonder, basically, playing his console. And that's not what happened. Um, and really gay. Really, really, really gay. Because first season, they made him, they, they made his character fruity. Which is fine, but, but it was a little ahead of its time, and they just didn't want to do it. Even the, the great David Gerald from the Robots and Everything was like, Ah, you're not going to do my story, ah. But yeah, he was saying that to them at the time, too. Um, but yeah, the, um, yeah, so this is the penultimate. Uh, yeah, story. And we have, we have, um, yeah, a, a host of interesting and bizarre characters on the planet. I didn't want it to end too, too goofy, but yeah, I guess redeeming the guy's junk and making him talk low-voiced again was, yeah, that's a really, really old joke, but that is pretty funny. Um, it's still funny. It's that, yeah, that, I uh, got redeemed. Um, yeah, and the question remained of the, of the last episode, how many of them were real and how many of them were shapeshifters? Well, really, if you look back at the last episode, like this one, there weren't any, there weren't any necessarily any shapeshifters in this one, because it was the other universe, because they mentioned that Odo's people didn't come out. But in the other universe, okay, when the, when the Thaumat character shows up, the Thaumat, the, when he shows up, he was a changeling. Everybody else was not. And Bemuse showed up as the other changeling lady. So they were, they were two changelings. But, uh, but yeah, the, the Cinderses were not changelings. And it's supposed to be Brian's story. And the, uh, yeah, this episode was... Uh, yeah, I can talk about that. Okay, uh, there was this one hilarious night of, uh, of uh, writing story uh, with the story. Uh, Brian's story, uh, the, the Star Trek guy. I happened to get back in touch with him after years. Literally years. Years. And, and we went on for a long time with this, this blog thing. Uh, he came up with all sorts of goofy ideas for a Star Trek episode. He never wrote one. So I said, well, I'll, I'll use some of your goofy ideas as a Star Trek episode, as a, a silly and fan film. So, Excellent. Mm. Have them tell pirate jokes, but not really. Ha, ah, walk the plank and all that. So, of course. <laughs> so he's not playing Kirk. He's playing a sort of Robin Williams type character uh, uh, who's a pirate in the story. But it's a mirror universe. So it's a mirror universe. It's not the mirror universe. I wanted to make the I wanted to make a mirror universe episode where I also was following along with the storyline, but also and the stories line, but also coming along with the, the Shives and his friend, and and the Jesse Gender is her friend as well, and saying like, okay, uh, you want to make a story where the story is interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. I know that seems redundant, but you want to make you want to make a good Star Trek story. A, a lot of fan films have the problem that they come out and they're just, I want to make a Mary Sue with myself in it. And that's not enough. That's the old, oh, the Kirk God staring into space in the universe and whatever. Uh, that's the old William Shatner doing Star Trek V and he goes to meet God and God is an alien because it can't really, really be God, obviously. Um, Next Generation did it better years earlier with Q by saying, okay, he's nearly omnipotent, which is weird. But no, he's not a God. He just has technology, powers. He's... His race has evolved to have technology that is so advanced that it's indistinguishable from magic. He can use that technology to do things. Uh, that's what that's what the Q are. They're they're not necessarily godlike. They just have control of space and time that we don't understand. They're advanced of the travelers, but they're not too much advanced of the travelers, actually. Um, yeah, and the dates are all messed up with the other thing, which they address in the next episode. The star dates are addressed. Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, there's one or two lines story that were added, um, but yeah, they, they shouldn't have been added after Picard season three at all. But everything should be okay with the last story, and I've done the last story as another 45 minute episode or 50 minute episode, and I came to the end of the eight episodes or ten episodes, I guess you can count the two parters, and uh, and yeah, we were all like, oh, this is it, this is the the final story and whatever, but is it? Is it? Can we do one more? Can we squeeze one more out toward the end here? Because we know we're getting toward the end of the whole thing. I think we can. And we have to come up with a good idea. And the only good idea sitting around is a, is a script for a Distant Destinies movie that uh, is never going to get made. So it was written during the pandemic. It was written during the, um, it was written during the, uh, the hiatus, the uh, writer's strike. And I figured, like, well, why can't I just use this? I mean, it's like it's an ancient aliens goofy kind of thing. There's similar characters to those in the story. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so the twelve, the uh, eight episode, ten episodes will complete the series of destinations, but there will be a Starship locations destinations, uh, a follow up after, after do another one. So, but this is the penultimate of this. We don't know how far off that other one is, but and it does end with a satisfying ending. But we thought we just want to gonna want to do a little little more of it, a little more because it's fun. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, uh, once we did the, we did the part where, where, where Dax is reiterating her line on the bridge, re reiterating what Kirk did at the end of Star Trek VI, which really should have been the end of Kirk, they shouldn't have done a Kirk Picard crossover movie. They were copying us in Silly, Silly Trek, and they were like, yeah, let's, let's do Starship Locations, Kirk and Picard, no, they shouldn't have, they really shouldn't have, that, that, that was, a, yeah, the Nexus, ooh, whatever, uh, they shouldn't have done that. Looking back on it, back to the 90s, 30 years ago, they probably shouldn't have done it. Because they killed him stupidly, and they should have killed him on the bridge. No, we wouldn't do that here. No. We do reference it, but we wouldn't do that here. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's uh, been fun so far. So I was doing that, that line there, and I was thinking, like, yeah, what is the final cruise of, of her as in under command? What would be in, the, in a, a, a balls-to-the-wall... Silly Trek Starship Locations, No Holds Barred movie. Well, yeah, they would probably go to find the Q's creators and do that. And that's kind of what that other story is about. With a, like ancient human people show up and they're encountering the crew. They could easily be rejiggered as rejiggered, easily readjusted as a as a Silly Trek where they where they encounter the final overlords and the whole thing. And that's the end. <laughs> Ninety minute awesomeness. Um, yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, um, that would that would be an appropriate uh, story concept just to do that, and have them go on and do that because uh, yeah, because it's unlikely they're going to make a series out of that. Unlikely they're going to do anything with that for all things are moved. It's unlikely. So let's just do this, get this, put everything, and then put the episodes together. Now. Maybe just put the episodes together first, all that, then do that. Mm. But all the raw footage is, is here. So awesome. Yeah. So yeah, this is the penultimate episode of this the story. Uh, and no, no, actually, uh, uh, the buff him is not gay. In the story, he was kind of bi, but <laughs> he's not. Um, anyway, <laughs> oh my, yes. Hmm. So odd that Halter was the commander in the story, and, and that and that Hazel never shows up, but he showed up twice before in the other two stories. So I figured yeah, he doesn't have to show up here. It's funnier if it's Halter, although Halter's um, yeah mother's in the hospital, so he couldn't be in the story. Yeah, so he would have been he would have been cast as he would have been the voice in this episode, but we couldn't get him, so they filled it. Yep. So anyway, here we here we have it. <laughs> We're trying to imitate his voice and others. So anyway, yeah, penultimate.